Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2 with Art Kirsch and myself and our fabulous Fabrica. <laughs> <laughs> our love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrica. Michelle, great to have you back again. Hi, John. Hi, Art. Good to be here. Thanks. Hi. You, you know, John and I have been discussing from time to time questions we want to ask you, and we've been putting off asking you this question for a long time. Uh, and it's a question about procrastination, <laughs> especially when you're talking about with partners. Can you shed some light on this in this long delayed ask? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yes, I mean, this can truly be a challenge in a relationship, right? I mean, sometimes there's one person in the relationship that's really quick to handle things and the other one tends to wait drag their heels, put it off. And um, it can be frustrating really for both partners because the one who's waiting on the other and then the one who's feeling rushed and you know, what do we do, right? So um, I'm really glad we're talking about this today. Um, so I read a book recently about this. It's called The, the Procrastinator's Handbook. And, um, and I read that because I have to admit, I'm the one in my relationship that tends to procrastinate more. And so I know, I know it's, kind of an exasperating trait of mine. And um, what I'm trying to do is become an anti procrastinator, which is uh, a word in the book. Um, the book's written by the late Rita Emmett. Um, highly recommend it. So I have some, I have some ideas for that. Well, oh, sure. Then. I'm waiting to hear them. Yeah. I'm <laughs> the procrastinator in my relationship. You are the procrastinator? John? I am. I'm, okay, I'm real right. good at, at not getting things done. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm gonna get to them. Yeah, They're on my list. I'm gonna get right. to them. Honest, I will. Right, 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 right. So yeah, so and I, I was gonna see if anybody had a reaction to the word anti-procrastinator, anti-procrastinator. Excuse me, because I'd never heard the word before. I, I kind of think it's cool. I'm gonna like adopt that myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, so here's some things to try. So so the first thing I recommend is that to really have a frank conversation with your partner at a time when neither of you is under a deadline, right? So, um, you know, because basically the book that I read is really about someone who wants to change their habits around things. So the book doesn't, it has a little bit in there about how to, you know, help your partner. But the bottom line is you really can't change your partner, right? All you can do is sort of influence them in the way, in the way that you can. So, so what, what I'm suggesting here is that does this, so you have this conversation when nobody, neither of you is rushed, does the slower mover want to change or is it working for them? And so that's a kind of a dialogue to have. And this is just, you know, being curious, no judgment, just trying to learn about the other person. And if they feel it is working for them, but not for you, <laughs> the more action oriented person, and then, then share the repercussions for you. Um, because if they're not motivated to change on their own, they're probably not going to change. However, if they're motivated because they see that it causes you distress, you know, you're going to raise the bar for them of their own motivation, hopefully. So you can explain about how, you know, when you step in to help them, it, you know, you get stressed and, and, and you get angry or resentful and it, you know, it doesn't help our relationship. And so you're basically bringing to them how it impacts you. And once we know that, hopefully we're a little more motivated to change. Yeah, I think that's good advice. I can tell you firsthand, nagging does not work. <laughs> right. Did you get that done? Did you do that yet? Is it finished now? Right. No, it doesn't well, work. It, it, yeah. it eventually works actually, John, because you, but sometimes it takes months as opposed to hours. <laughs> it doesn't. Right. Speed it. And then we have to go. Yeah, and... but then it just, it kind of just gnaws at the, yeah. the you know, yeah. it just, ugh, it, yeah. yeah. And then I we mean, have to I send have to our partner I... to go listen to the uh, packaging complaints that we talked about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been a nagger in my life and I'm not proud of that. And I just, I try to, just, no. Um, um, but, but yeah, so the question is really, once you kind of have this dialogue with your partner going, it's the next question is, are they open to you helping them? Like, are you open to me supporting you and helping you get things done on time? Like, 
how to plan better maybe, or share some of your own strategies of how you're able to get things done or, or definitely, you know, help them, you know, recommend this book, the procrastinators handbook. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a fun read. Surprisingly, it's a really good read. And um, this woman's an expert. Um, she ran lots of uh, workshops about it. And anyway, so highly recommend that. Good. We'll, we'll put the, the name of the book and the author into um, the details of the video down below. So that people, so people can then can refer to it and procrastinate on starting to read the book. So <laughs> that, would, that would be in yeah. the spirit of things would be a good thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other suggestion I have as well is to discover together, like what are the specific situations um, in your relationship that create the most tension around, like that, that procrastination makes worse, right? So can you brainstorm together, like what, you know, what, well, maybe you don't have to brainstorm it, you know, maybe it's always tax time or maybe it's before a trip or something like that, but, but can you brainstorm together is there a way for the more action oriented person to handle more of these tasks, right? And then the, and then to make sure if you're gonna do that, make sure the person who tends to move a little slower, like what can they do to pick up the slack, some other area of you know the common chores of the household, whatever, so that they can pick up the slack of where you're gonna step in more. So you're kind of like divvying up the responsibilities differently so that it's less, there's less tension around getting things done in a timely manner. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I can recommend from personal experience, and I, I'm sure it's not true for everybody, but um, scheduling things. In other words, and I've got to schedule it. If, if my wife schedules something for me, <laughs> it, it's not real. You know, I, I didn't make that schedule. I may or may not be able to meet it. But if she gets me to schedule something mm -hmm. and I actually work my schedule around it, then I'll get it done. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. kind of getting it out, getting it on our calendar. It's a big difference yeah. Than, yeah, than having a conversation about it. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And and another um, and I, I love that because she does talk about that in the book about planning and uh, I think she called it back timing. I'm not sure the right language she used, but basically, you know, when it needs to be done and then you give yourself a buffer and you back it yeah. up and then you back it up the different tasks involved. So yeah, absolutely. And I love what you said, John, that, that you need to be the one to put it on your calendar, yeah. not have somebody else put it on because then you're really owning that. Yeah. You're going to get it done. And it's yeah. not like it's somebody a psychological else. Psychological commitment. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And um, the other thing that can help in this situation too is kind of like um, if it's happening regularly where the person who's um, you know more action oriented and is waiting on their partner tends to step in mm -hmm. and help at the last minute, that person can decide, you know what, I'm just gonna draw a line in the sand here and I'm not gonna be rescuing you in the future. And so what, what they can choose to do, this is like kind of a, um, kind of a lever to help or, you know, fulcrum to make the change, right? Basically, you you make it explicit. You say in advance, you know, just so you know, um, next time when you're rushing around and you want me to help clean the house because, you know, your mother's coming over or whatever, I'm not going to be doing that this time. And I'm not doing it to be mean. I'm just telling you that, like, the last minute stress bothers me and I end up being resentful. And, um, um, yeah, so I just, in fact, there was a quote in the book, which I kind of like. Um, it was, uh, have it here, lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. Oh, that's mm. good. Yeah. That could rig for silent running from days in my household. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So this line in the sand idea is basically saying that, like, you know, you're, you're giving them information in advance and you're letting them know. And then, you know stick to it if at all possible, because if you end up helping them out, sure. then they don't really get the consequences right. um, of their delay. And sometimes consequences are the big, you know, growth opportunity. That's how we learn, right? Sometimes right. we learn more from failures than successes. So not that we want our partner to fail, but we're just saying, you know what, the house is going to be messy then when your mom arrives and um, maybe next time we'll do it differently, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm certainly glad that we did not put this subject up any longer. <laughs> 
Yeah, I can tell I'm really lit up about this because I'm I've been learning myself. Like I said, this has been a thing that I do procrastinating, and I'm just I'm kind of excited at my new like I got some new strategies going. So you, you know, you know, there's um, something like a reformed procrastinator, as I know. as they say. I yeah, and then uh, the last thing I want to bring here in, in, as a, as a tip to to share is that when your partner does handle things like early or on time celebrate them like celebrate it together like oh this is so great i'm so glad you got it done early you know you weren't up late at night and and you weren't uh, stressing over it we got to spend time you know like before a trip for example like or we just get to relax the night before our trip rather than you're scurrying around and staying up late you know so really celebrate the, the joy of that and um you know when we appreciate something it tends to increase the likelihood it'll happen again so I, and I even suggest even like I'm doing this myself, like celebrate your own uh, successes, even small ones, right? That, oh, hey, I got it done oh, two days before. That's that's better than before. And anyway, so I'm into that. Good idea. Good idea. Great. All great tips. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.